Hello, today I'm going through the process of selecting a power bank or a portable battery. There are tons of options on the market and there are some red flags to look out for when selecting the correct power bank. In the video, I'm gonna go over some basics of power banks, what energy is, which is really the most important thing, then what they can do with that energy. I will go through some example devices to figure out how many charges can really be expected from power banks. I haven't tested nearly as many power banks as I have chargers, so it's a limited data set. So I will be leaning more on the marketing numbers to try to pick a good power bank. Thanks for tuning in. I will be talking about a bunch of products throughout the video and I will have affiliate links in the description. These don't cost you anything, but I make a few percent if you buy with one of the links. Thanks to my current patrons and channel supporters. You help keep the channel going. If you want a technical deep dive into some of these, I will have full reviews linked in the description. First, what is a power bank? If you want to sum it up quick, it's a battery. It lets you get a little more life out of your devices while on the go. What does a battery do? It stores energy. Energy can have a lot of different units, and this is where some of the confusion already comes into the picture. We will get into this a bit more later. There are really two numbers you will see with a power bank. The first is the milliamp hours, which is only part of the picture, and the second is the watts it can deliver, and again, this is only part of the picture. So great, two most marketed numbers don't help. I guess there's a reason to make this video after all. I'm not going to deep dive into the USB-C protocols and all too much in this video. I suggest you watch the power adapter or charger video first, since that gives a good overview of the modes of operation USB-C supports and how different devices request different modes of operation. Just like those devices, power banks must communicate with the device plugged in, but now it gets a little more complicated because the power bank must also decide if it wants to charge or supply power. Generally, I found that the devices behave well though. I try not to put them in too stressful of situations, except when I make them overheat, which is, for some, a little too easy. Power banks store energy. Energy is in the form of power that is used over a time period. Watts, a unit of power multiplied by time, gives you the unit you are probably most familiar with, and this is kilowatt hours on your electric bill. It's the same energy. Power banks aren't quite so big, so they usually will see them marked in watt hours or a thousand times smaller. The unit you will most often see on power banks for marketing is again a thousand times smaller and also missing part of the equation, milliamp hours. So they got the time part and the current part, but they missed the voltage that is needed to get power to figure out the energy. Thankfully, it is a requirement to list the watt hours on the power bank somewhere, and generally they all do in microprint on the device. It is a little bit of word soup because watts and watt hours sound like very similar things. My testing generally focuses around figuring out what the real watt hour numbers are for both charging and discharging the power banks, and then comparing them with the ratings they list. Sometimes they do great, and sometimes not so great. The good thing about watt hours is it's easy to figure out how long something will run based on the power consumption. So 100 watts and 100 watt hours means you can operate for one hour. Of course, this is the ideal case and in reality it will end up being less time considering efficiency losses. It is also easy to use this number to figure out how many times a device can be recharged. The table on screen shows a bunch of devices and the approximate battery size each of these uses. If we start with a 50 watt hour battery, then we can pretty easily see how many times each of these devices can be recharged. Of course, we are assuming this energy transfers 100% efficiently, which it doesn't, so it's probably more like 90% of whatever is shown here. Some devices like laptops need a bit more to fully charge from a battery this size. If we bump up the battery size to 75 watt hours, then we can see that it can handle charging at least all of these devices once. You can see that modern devices with a smaller energy capacity can get chewed up pretty quickly. If you look at a graph of power usage, battery size, and time, we can see that at low wattages the batteries will last a fairly long time. As the power level increases, the amount of runtime decreases. Keep increasing the power level and the battery gets depleted faster. By the time you get to 100 watts, many of these batteries would struggle to actually stay on, but theoretically should run for a few minutes. Not very useful. This is also why generally smaller power banks will have less power capability. Batteries have limitations. Speaking of limitations, one question I get asked often is about airline restrictions. Batteries over 100 watt hours become airline restricted travel items. Generally, they require an extra pass to travel with these batteries up to about 160 watt hours. Generally, this is reserved for medical devices. Batteries that are larger than 160 watt hours are not allowed on airlines. Walking through the steps of buying a power bank, there will be some similarities to buying a power adapter or charger, but now we must consider another factor, the energy or storage of the battery. From the previous table, the time a pack will run for for various powered devices 
devices is known, so picking a device shouldn't be too difficult. So like before, first I need to find out what protocol the device requires and make sure the power bank has the same protocol and the power level to match. This is usually the watts figure you see quoted on power banks. For example, the Anker 250 watt, which is lots of marketing hype. It's 140 watts on one port if you dig into it, but more bigger number more better, right? That all comes down to the protocol though. So power and protocol, the P's. The next thing to consider is the energy storage. People need energy, but the units are typically different, calories or kilocalories. But for robots like Bender, it's all about liquor. I mean watt hours. Ethanol is actually just another form of energy storage, and it's more dense than batteries, by a lot. Power banks tend to be quoted in the figures we talked about earlier though, milliamp hours, or not quite energy. The device you are using or charging will have a power consumption figure or a watt hour figure itself. You can use that to figure out how large of a power bank you need based on the time you need to operate for. So five days, five charges on a smartphone, you are going to need a pretty large power bank. Next, read reviews. Check for DOA or failed after n number of months usage notes of swelled batteries, things like that. There aren't too many devices that get tested specifically for safety in this market, so checking reviews somewhat has to be relied on. The videos like this are one of the tools to use, but it's still only a piece of the puzzle. Next, if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. The power bank has 50,000 milliamps and can do 300 watts and it's only $25. Nope, it's fake. Stop looking and move along. There are plenty of examples of even 1 million milliamp power. The units get stupid, and yes, if these are even remotely compact, then they are all fake. If they break the laws of physics, then it's not real. Okay, let's look at some real power banks now. I have tested about 20 power banks, and some have been really great while others have been pretty disappointing. I think Anchor is probably the best known brand and probably catches the most flack, but offers a huge variety of power banks across a very wide price range. They ended up making the top picks list twice, and I expect this to change, but the reasons for being the top picks aren't performance, but more like right time, right place. The smaller packs that charge slower and discharge slower are not very efficient, so I probably wouldn't recommend them for a new power bank today. I do have more reviews coming on some smaller power banks that hopefully can top the performance that I have measured from these. But anyway, from what I have tested now, the best one I'm calling cheap and basic is the Anchor 325 Power Bank Power Core Essential 20K 20,000 milliamp hour. This is the best choice of what I have tested so far. Stepping up to some more advanced functionality, the moderate price and capable Bassius Blade HD 100 watt. This power bank can do about 60 watts continuously and it can boost up to 100 watts. It is relatively compact, at least in one dimension, making it unique. It isn't the most efficient thing out there, but better than the Anker 325 by quite a lot. And it's also a lot more expensive. Moving on to the more power capable power banks. I should have a counter for how many times I say power in this video. The things change to a new price bracket. These power banks also start to have issues with things like overheating or misleading claims. I think I've seen bogus claims from most of the larger power banks I've looked at in one way or another. ZMI, Ugreen, Shargeek, Bassius, and Anchor all have models that either shut down, overheated, or failed to deliver on the promises out of the box. That doesn't mean they're all bad though. My pick for the most features and functions is the Anchor A1340 Prime 27,650 milliamp hour power bank. 250 watts. This power bank is packed with so many modes of operation and capabilities, whether you want them or not. It is also right on the edge for energy capacity for being carry-on friendly, even if it is a bit bulky. And finally, my top all-around pick is the ZMI Power Pack number 20 QB826G. I recently took this on a week-long trip and had to charge up a bunch of devices and never had to worry about the pack being depleted, even on the 9-hour flight where my seat outlet didn't work. This kept my devices powered up. It's a little bit smaller of a battery versus the Anker and has a few less features, but the form factor is, in my opinion, a little nicer to pack. There are also a few other brands that sell the same pack now, too. I noticed that the Evitronic brand has a new model out where the 60 watt got upgraded to 65 watt and got some more ports, so I have that on the way, and since that got my compact and capable award when I tested it, hopefully the new one can meet that level. As with any of the chargers I've mentioned, I have full videos reviewing these power banks, and they will be linked in down below. So that about does it. My late 2023 picks. They may not be the ones for you, so remember to follow these steps to find the right power bank. First, figuring out what your device needs to be charged effectively, the protocol. This is the most difficult part because most manufacturers don't tell you. Then, figure out how many watts you need and add some buffer to the watt number so the power bank doesn't overheat and also will last longer. Three, checking the energy capacity you need. Are you charging a phone or a laptop? 
the energy of those two and the power needs are very different, so figuring out what you need is an important step. Finally, I would look through reviews in the description to see if there's any mention of a safety mark or safety checks. Actual product photos sometimes help here. A lot of times these are self-declaration for products like this, so reviews hopefully flush out the ones that are really fakes and don't meet their stated criteria. As with power adapters, if you need multiple ports, you can repeat these steps, but remember the energy and power to each device will get lower and lower the more things you plug in. The power banks I use regularly are the ZMI Powerback No. 20 QB826G and the Bassius Blade HD. The reason why I use these two is that they can both deliver 20 volts and one has a large amount of energy available and the other is flatter and more compact. If you want features, the Anchor 250 Watt Prime power bank pretty much has it all. Bluetooth, and more USB modes than anything else. It isn't a bad power bank, but it is big and heavy. The Anchor 325 20,000 milliamp power bank is the opposite end. It is very basic, five volts only, and it can run for a long time, and is simple, so it will probably last longer. It is also much less expensive. These may not be the best for your specific mix, but hopefully throughout this video, you were able to learn the process of selecting the correct power bank for your device. In looking at the multitude of options out there, you must select something that is appropriate for the device. It is not so easy to do since there's a lot of confusion about what charging method each device uses and what the terms mean. Thankfully, power banks do list the MAH or milliamp hours, so at least you can get an idea of the energy they contain by assuming the nominal voltage of 3.7 or so. But it is difficult to know the deliverable energy without some testing. I try to test the performance of each and go from there. There's a lot of work to be done still to make sense of it all, and of course, the ecosystem is ever-changing, so this won't be the last video or the best video on the topic just one of the videos on the topic. Thanks for watching. I need to get a database put together for these still. I really just need to add a product category to the already existing database, but it's all about time. For now, the best way to find these things is the All Things website video list and then using find for a specific video topic if I've covered it. Next week, the plan is to look at some more power adapters. I am not quite sure which ones yet, but I'll get updated once I have it figured it out. As I test more power banks, I am sure my conclusions will change, but there's always the next update round, not until 2024 though. There is a schedule of video release dates on my website, so check it out. Thanks again, and goodbye.